Good morning to everyone. Today, I stand before you to share my views on the topic, why I love my mother and my father. There are many people who have come across in this short span. Some of them are funny. Some of them get angry very often. Some of them love to spend time with me. And some of them ignore me. But there are two people who remain constant with me from the moment I open my eyes. My parents. The most precious gift of God for me. I love my parents as all children do because this love is unconditional and gender free. I also love them because they love me excessively but teach me to not cross limits in life. Parents play an important role in our multifaceted development. The role of parents depends on our thinking and our sanskars. They are our first teachers and role models. Let's start with my mother. She is great. She is always happy and can put a smile on anyone's place. When she sees when she sees something, she sticks with it. She is also very spontaneous and outgoing. Sometimes she makes crazy things crazy too when she's feeling up to it. Well, I will definitely try and follow in her footsteps. Now, about my dad. Well, let's just see that he is the best dad you could ever have. My dad is my hero and I am his princess. He is very smart, which comes in handy when it comes to mechanical things, which I am horrible at. When I want to know about space and geography, he answers me all the questions. He also takes me out on trips. He has fun with me and always plays me my favorite games, chess and business. My mom and my dad are very outgoing people. They have many priorities and are always doing some work that involves hard work and most of the time get it done. I remember an incident that happened a few years back. I used to go to the park every day with my mother to play in the park. And one day while I was playing, I fell down my upper lip was dead. My mom rushed me home and she put some ice on my lip but the blood did not stop. She took me to a nearby hospital and the doctor there said that there was a surgery to be done. My mom called my dad and I was given anesthesia. My dad asked my mom to go home since my sister was getting cranky. After the surgery, as I was waking up from the anesthesia, I was blabbering and showing faces. My dad called my mom to come see me at the hospital. Both my parents sat behind, beside me until I gained my consciousness. I could feel the love and care they had upon me. There is a famous quote saying that no love is greater than a mom's love and no care is greater than a cat's care. My dad and my mom are my best friends. They, my dad is my inspiration and my mom is my best friend. They are also my role models for life. I will always be with them. I love my parents so much. They will always be my heroes. Thank you. A reader lives a thousand lives before he dies. A man who never reads only lived one. These are the famous words of the American novelist George R. R. Martin. Respected judges and my dear friends, today I am here to speak about the topic importance of reading. A book is one of the most powerful things in the world, offering us new opportunities to learn, grow and be inspired. It enables us to make different decisions and choices in our lives. The importance of reading is undeniable. Reading books improves our knowledge and increases our vocabulary. With every book we read, we get to know new things about different people and their experiences, different places, cultures and facts that we would not have known otherwise. Reading provides us with a great deal of new information and can connect people from all over the world, thus proving to be a great conversation starter. It is one of those constructive habits that help us improve our concentration power. It helps our brain to focus our attention. It keeps our mind young, healthy and sharp. Studies shows that reading can even help prevent 
Ajima's disease. Reading also develops our imagination, creativity, and also helps us to dream and think in ways we would not have been able to before. There are moments in time when we, for, when we feel down and discouraged or feel like giving up or feeling less important in our lives. Reading a good inspirational book during that period can change our way of thinking and can make us motivated and give us hope. Reading gives us a sense of belonging and reminds us that we are not alone. Books connect us with their characters and plots and make us empathic, thus enabling us to feel and understand the, the, uh, the problems of the characters. Books make us feel happy, sad, jealous, loved, betrayed and so on. It consists of different mixed emotions that ultimately help us to grow emotionally. In those morning times, the first thing we all do is checking out in social media. The last thing we all do before going to bed is also checking out in social media. And the only one thing we do throughout the day in our free time is the same, checking out in social media. It is so fair that it is given a ruling role in our life. Today's social media is almost indispensable. From six degrees to MySpace and now the Facebook Instagram era, the Twitter world and the rest is more to come. At least 3.96 billion people are active users. That is almost 49% of the world population. 63% above the age of 13 are on social media. 29% of Indians are active users. 70% of Americans, 71% of Australians. We spend an average of 2 hours 24 minutes. That is more than the time we tend to speak to our acquaintances or family members, like parents especially. If we continue to spend this much time every day, then by the end of our lives, we would have spent 5.7 years that is our middle and high school combined. It has become the go-to, come and go and life-saving platform, isn't it? Imagine waking up one morning and finding yourself without any social media platforms. Devastating. Where will you find the day's trending stories? What will you scroll through when you're bored? Where will you find the viral videos? How will you expand your professional career? A study says that 73% of millennials have found their job on social media. Back in 1997, no one had a clue that social media would one day become the center of our universe. Why 1997? It is the year that the six degrees went to life, the first social media platform. To recognize the monarchy rule of social media in our life, Back in 2010, 30th June was marked as Social Media Day. The story you see is not the fall flowers and rainbows that come down. It is the milestones by good, bad and ugly. Let's talk about the good first. Social media has been a lifesaver this pandemic. It made our transition to work from home, helped in online learning, helped us to stay connected, Fitness goals, SOS goals for bed and essentials like oxygen, food, water, etc. So full credit goes to it. But where is it due? Is it time to log out? Is social media's bad outgrowing the good? Social media is making us asocial. The hours we spend online is affecting our body, mental health and steadiness. Everywhere you look, every time you see, it's full of anxiety, depression. Then there is cyberbullying, very famous. Social media can be toxic. 210 millions are addicted to it. They can't stop scrolling through it. 89% are experiencing phantom vibration, false vibration. The question is, 
are we secure? It is controlling us, maiming us, forcing us. Then why can't we stop it where we dress to be pleasing or which is Instagrammable? We go to destinations that are trendy. We consume food for Facebookality. But remember that ultimately it depends solely upon us, solely upon us. The very terrific blue whale challenge developer himself told us that his mission was to eliminate the biological waste of the world. No wonder our ancestors used to say that our actions depend upon the past and that decides our future. Let me start by asking a question. This social media day call out for a celebration or is it a reminder to spend offline to try and mute notification log out from virtual reality live in the real world peacefully it is for you to decide thank you hello everyone if the earth could speak to us what would she say to us of course she's special she is mother earth you know how mothers are right mothers are the source of creative energy all of life begins from mothers. She is the ultimate protector and nurturer of all beings. Look at the way a mother takes care of her babies, be it a baby elephant, a baby giraffe, or even a human baby. She not only provides with food, but also helps her baby grow into a young adult, standing on their own legs, fighting all odds. In order to achieve this, she sometimes might be the fury and strict disciplinary, at times the most loving. But after all, a mother wants the best for her children. Similarly, Mother Earth has been so considerate and loving to all of us by providing the best of life and environment. But as children, have we done justice to her? If she could speak to us, she would be crying to us about the environmental destruction that we humans did to her. The pollution, the litter that we dump into the oceans, the greenhouse gases, the smoke that choke her, the corporate greediness that mines out her essence and tremble her, and of course, the clogging rivers. She, lame, she will lament about her torn out the beauty which was once pure and now worn down to shatters. She will say, How long can I stand the trouble? I start to scream and tremble. I give all I have unto the end, but it's all in your hands to defend and mend. As children, are we ready to listen to our Mother Earth? Thank you.